one. Welcome to a special edition of Watching Film with Seth Barnador. I've got a special guest today. I've got one of the best defensive minds I know to break down what some are calling the best defense of all time. So I've got Riley Reed on. Uh, Riley, why don't you tell everybody about yourself and kind of give them a little dose of your background. His camera's not working, but he'll be able to share a screen with us so you can kind of see um, how this Georgia defense likes to play. Riley, tell everybody about yourself real quick. Yeah, well, I, my camera's actually working. I just didn't want to – I didn't want you to lose any followers or anything. Scare, scare I appreciate it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm excited to be here. Um, we did one last year of the SEC championship game, and uh, I just have a lot of fun doing this. So. Yeah. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm the defensive coordinator at um, Union County High School in Florida. And, um, you know, I, I went to the University of Florida, and I got to spend some time there. Um, in the in the room there when I was there from 13 until I guess 17. So that's kind of where I learned a little bit of football there and then you know just I've always enjoyed the game. I really like watching it. Um, I know some of the some of the Georgia stuff, a lot of it ties into what kind of the stuff that we were doing at Florida. Um, I just like watching them play so I'm excited to do this one. Yeah, it's tough. Um, we were talking off air that's tough. You know, two guys that grew up uh, Gator fans watching Georgia's defense from a coach perspective, and you're like, man, that's I love watching them play. Yeah. It's, it kind of hurts your soul a little bit, um, but they are really, really good. Um, Riley, you, you got to spend a little bit of time talking to their staff. You, you know, you've gone up there and, and spoken with those guys. You know, what makes them so good, you think? Uh, just – in turn, just generally, and then and then we'll get down into the scheme a little bit more. But what makes Georgia's defense so so good? Yeah, well, I think the first thing is the the dudes that they have. I mean, they got really good players, um, but they're they're so fundamentally sound, like across the board. Um, I thought they tackled really well last year, and this year it's like they're even better. Um, they tackle really well on the perimeter. Their defensive backs are physical. Um, so, like, you'll see teams that will throw bubbles out there and, and they just get blown up and get tackled in the back foot. And it's like you don't think you're throwing, like, a quick little bubble or now you're trying to get three or four yards. And they just run in the football so so hard and they tackle well. I mean, to me, yeah. that's what defense is. Yeah, and, and a lot of that, right, is – I think some people may think that that's not, you know, tackling. It's not necessarily coaching because you see so many teams that are so bad at it. But I know Georgia does something. I think they call it like modern Oklahoma. And it's it's mm -hmm. just working on getting off blocks and attacking the bubble. Yeah, They throw that bubble out there, and that's how they work Oklahoma for those guys. So it is something they put a lot of time into coaching. And like you said, they're just unbelievable, uh, just an unbelievable tackling team. And then – uh, great players, like you mentioned, but they also do a lot of stuff schematically, and, and we're going to go into some of that. What makes them so good? So we'll we'll show some video. Riley will kind of draw some stuff up. Um, he's yeah. got a pretty good handle uh, on what they do, and you know they do a lot of really cool stuff on defense. So we'll kind of start looking at uh, some examples. Riley's got some clips, and you can kind of see how they attack some offenses here. So what's first, Riley? Yeah, first is is a it's a third down play but I think what another thing like that I didn't really talk about that makes them so good on uh on defense is they're, they're so good on first and second down um so they're getting people like on first down if if you can't run the ball effectively on them and now you're in second and long and they're, they're almost kind of dictating the offenses like that they're going to have to throw the ball to beat them and then they get them in third down and they can be exotic and they can be creative and dictate protections. And that's what I think is like maybe where they've kind of advanced in the past four, four or five years. And especially when they brought in uh landing, you know, it is kind of like their, their third down package stuff. And you see it kind of grow every year. You know, at first it was kind of like a static, um, you know, we're going to give you this look and then we're going to bring people from different places. But now they're like they're stemming into like their fronts on third down. So it, it's offensive lines are having trouble picking up an ID and protection. Um, they have the ability 
to start in two high and get to one high. So, you know, you're talking different, like showing that we're going to play, you know, a version of cover two, and now we're playing a version of cover one or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they also now, like this year, you've seen it more, is having the ability to start and cover one, like a one high picture, and then get into a two high look. And so they're just so advanced on like third down and, and what they can do. Um, but this is a – so this is a third down against Clemson. And they've been doing this a lot. This is – um, I think this is Adam Anderson, number 19. They'll do this a lot. He's he's an outside linebacker. And they'll kind of start in an odd front picture. So they're showing – you could call this uh, a one-high picture. Um, but they're starting in odd front. So, you know, you're probably going to get, you know, fan, fan. They're going to base here, and then these these guys are going to dual read. Well, now they're stemming, and now they're in an the even front. So now you have to change the protection on the fly. Mm -hmm. And now they're running uh, what they call Buddha, which is they're going to blitz the back. So they're going to they're gonna work this way. This guy's in the coverage. He's actually got the back man to man, and then they're going to run a double insert here. Um, so when we get to the the end zone copy of it, you'll kind of see it's like a no win uh, situation for the offensive line. They're just playing cover one behind it. So let me get to uh, boom. They stem. So now you'll see the offensive line right. They have to recheck it, yeah. and now what they're doing is he's working here. So chances are with the back over here, they're going to get center slide. Mm -hmm. So they're going to slide it this way. They're going to insert here, and then they're going to go big on big. Well, what happens is this guy is a blitz peel guy. He's going B to C. So they're going to pick that up. He's going to pick that up, and then you're going to get two on the back. And whether they cross dog it or they just – hit it straight, which I think they just hit it straight here. It's kind of a no-win situation. So you see here Clemson gets the back out. So they're basically wasting this guy because yeah. he has to honor that. Like that's mm -hmm. one of their best pass rushers. So you're not just going to kick to – not kick to him and put the back on him. Yeah, can't cut that guy loose. But you'll see the back flares. So he's got the back, and then you really got two-on-one here. And the thing is, with them going, let me uh, get rid of all these lines. But he's a contain guy. He's a contain guy. So you're 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 really running a four man pressure. So you can still yeah. play coverage. And the idea is, it's like it's like a six man pressure, right? But you're dropping guys out because you're trying to waste that guy with this guy, mm -hmm. and you're trying to waste this guy with him. And so to the back side, he'd take the back coming out, and then uh, the other stand-up guys, he dropping kind of for hots and trying to – or where's he kind of dropping yeah, to? What's so, his rule? So they're they're playing one rat. So he's got the back. It's just man. Mm -hmm. All right, it's man free. He's your middle field player, and he's going to be your low hole rat. Yeah. So, so if, you know – as an offensive guy, when I see this, you know, when you see Blitz, you're thinking hot. Well, he may – they're going to drop this stand-up in right underneath where your hot throw may go. So your quarterback may think he's got this open hot throw, and now they're dropping a guy right underneath it that he doesn't even see. Exactly. So it's as, – as an offensive guy, you're watching this stuff and you're seeing all kinds of problems this can create because, you know, like Riley mentioned, the offensive line is re id in the front. You know, if your quarterback is your guy that has to ID the front, now he's got to come back up the line of scrimmage, re-ID everything, and it really just takes you out of rhythm, too. It's it's really, obviously, well-designed stuff. Yeah, and and so last year they were running that pressure a lot. Like, if you watch them in the Cincinnati, and, and this is one that Wisconsin's been running for forever. It's probably been one of their best ones, and I'm pretty sure they got it from them. But this year, they're they're like I said, they're starting in the odd front and they're stemming to even to run it, which makes it even more difficult to pick up. 
So this was we we kind of talked about um, how good Georgia is at tackling, uh-huh. and um, I think here they're going to get a linebacker on the back in space, and you just they they just don't miss tackles. I think that's one of the the things that makes them so good. So they're running it's a, it's a little power read play with a yeah. toss action. So Clemson's reading this guy. And if he squeezes this down block by the tackle, you're getting this. He's going to toss it out here to him. If this guy was upfield, they're pulling the backside guard. And if he's upfield to run with that, the quarterback will run underneath. It's just a little power read play. Um so they're going to squeeze it and toss it out. So he's going to get the ball. They've got so two on one. So right now here, this he, looks pretty good outside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see they've got a hat yeah. for a hat, and he's going to be able to block one of these guys. So you're going to get a back on a linebacker in open field. And it just makes plays. But you'll see, like we kind of talked about this too, is how physical Georgia's DBs are. Yeah. So they go and set this edge, and it makes him have like if if they're up here blocking them at the the whatever where we at the twenty six, yeah. it's it's probably a different story. But you see these guys coming in and knocking blocks back. Yeah, and he shocks comes, the guy back to the twenty one. So it basically eats up that entire cushion. Yeah, exactly. eats and then it all up. See, there's a linebacker on a back in space making a heck of a play. <laughs> yeah that's the other that's the thing you mentioned up top that really does help is they've got a bunch of dudes too so when you have a bunch of dudes and you run some good stuff you're gonna have a really good defense yeah it's just a combination of probably one of the best defensive coaching staffs the best players and the best scheme in college football yeah um so you kind of here again you're gonna just see it's a perimeter screen, and you're going to see just block destruction by DBs. And this is actually, I want to say that's a tight end, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. You see them, they're stemming the front again, right? Yeah. And I don't even have that in there to show, but. So they're just throwing a little bubble. And just how physical these guys are out here to go knock. I mean, he's on his back, bam. Yeah. <laughs> that's a tight end, right? Trying to block a DB. I guess that's the receiver. But <laughs> either way, that tight end didn't get a lot of movement either. No. And trying to cross up the release, like trying to switch up the release too to get yourself a good angle didn't even matter. Yeah. So they're trying to do that. Yeah. Doesn't really. I mean, yeah. they're so physical. They're DBs. I mean, it, it's 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 cool to watch and, and we got to watch them practice and, and we saw them um doing that drill that you were talking about the the modern oklahoma yeah and i mean they get they get so many reps of it so fast it's it's something that i mean when you're scripting your practices that's important is how many reps can we get in this period yeah. um you know it's all scripted it's so efficient the way that they do it um I think that's, you know, watching them practice. And we picked up some stuff from how they practice that we do now, and it's it's helped our defense a lot. Yeah. Just getting uh, as many reps as you can in a minimal amount of time. Yeah, I think just, you know, just kind of following from afar, it really seems like Kirby, and I'll ask you kind of now, he's really seemed to be on, on the leading edge of a lot of things. I know he was – um, he realized early before some of these other guys that are that are uh, been pretty good defensively, like he had to shorten some of his calls because of the no huddle and the pace and all that kind of stuff. He, and he's always seems to be on that leading edge. Is that yeah. kind of how you felt watching them practice that they were just kind of out? Because uh, you've seen a, you've been to a lot of schools and seen a lot of teams practice. Did they feel kind of like far and away just the best coach team and kind of the best run practice you saw? Yeah, I mean, so so that week we were at um, – this was when I was at um, Trinity. Yeah. And um, we were at Auburn that same weekend. And comparing their practice to Auburn's practice, it was like night and day, just the pace, like the amount of reps that people were getting. Um, you know, it, it was impressive. Yeah. 
So how, how does, uh, it, we'll get into some more stuff, but how does, you know, how does this Georgia defense compare schematically to Alabama with Kirby kind of coming out from under that Saban tree? Are there a lot of similarities still, or, is, or has he kind of gone off with, you know, Lanning and some of these other guys he's brought in and, and kind of done his own thing and put his own twist on it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's still very similar, yeah. you know, and, and the terminology is still, I think, really similar. And if you if you watch it, I mean, Georgia probably runs – like if they run it, Alabama probably runs it too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think where they've kind of branched out is is their third down stuff. I think they're a lot more exotic on third down, and like because you really look at it, um, like in I guess it would have been seventeen was was that Kirby's first year there or was it sixteen? I can't remember. But so, like when when they first got there, um, Georgia was ne- they they were always good against the run. Um, but one thing that you never like saw was was their their TFL totals, and and their sack totals were always really really low. And if and if you watch Alabama, Alabama's kind of similar because their their big thing used to be, you know, on on first and second down we're going to play our base calls and then on third down, you know, that's when we kind of get into our sub packages and stuff like that. Uh And I I think where Georgia may be a little different is they've been running a lot more like zone replace stuff, like line movement, that type of stuff on on first and second down. And I think it's got them, you know, where they've created more tackles for loss and, and sacks on those early downs, which has been good because it puts offenses behind the chains early. Yeah, and that's something I saw um, just reading some stuff from Kirby. I saw him reference that in, uh, I think, a clinic he gave, maybe Nike Coach of the Year, one of those kind of things. And he he basically said, you know, there's studies done that every if you have a single negative play, your chance of scoring goes down dramatically. So he's really been yeah, and, and, like – he's really put an emphasis on creating negative plays. Yeah, and, and we kind of we kind of found the same thing out. Um, when we were at Trinity, it, it wasn't with necessarily the TFLs, but it was with first down. So it was like when, when we won first down at Trinity, we were like 88% of getting off the field on that set of down. So like yeah. that first down, if we got to stop there, then second, third down, we were 88% getting off the field. And when we didn't, it was like 51%. So it was a huge difference. Yeah. What did you quantify um, so when first three down, or less? Huge. Yeah, so like that that group of downs. So not necessarily that drive. I mean, three, like uh, that set of, when you first down is giving up three or less yards on first down. Is that what you guys yeah, quantified that, it? What, at? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We said anything where we had them second and eight. Okay. Second or eight or or, or more than that. We called. We said that we were winning first down. Okay. Um, All right, we got another clip so here from was, the Clemson game. Yeah. Um, so this is we we talked about Georgia's ability to kind of. Um, they're showing a one high pitcher. Mm-hmm. And this is where they'll run a lot of this where they bring the nickel. And normally they'll play what they just their Ripley is match stuff, which is basically man. But if this guy runs shallow, they'll kind of pass it off to a linebacker. Okay. Um so right now, if you're the quarterback, that's probably what you're thinking you're getting. You're getting nickel pressure, and they're gonna roll and play essentially man free. So you know I've got this shallow that's coming, and I've got him that's vacating, and uh, probably him too that's vacating. I should have that. Yeah. You know that's that that's kind of like the hot throw. Yeah. Maybe same idea. Look at like on the previous play, you think you're gonna have this hot wide open right there. Yep. Easy and, money. And so normally, how Georgia will play this outside leverage. Well, what they're actually doing is now they're playing cover two and they're trapping it, and he's coming down inside, and he's playing the vertical hook of two, which means if two's vertical, he's going to carry him. So he thinks, oh, I've got this quick, easy throw. I'm going to get it out, and we're going to live and play the next down. And he's coming down inside of it, and and now it's pick six, and he's gone. Yeah. And I think that was the only touchdown in this game. Yeah, so uh, (laughs) it was. So. 
Um, that's always a, that's always a good feeling for you guys on defense, right? When when it's a, there's only one touchdown of the game and you scored it. Yeah, yeah. That gives you you guys got some extra swag going into the next week <laughs> in practice. Yeah, those are always good. So you know, just their ability to, to show and confuse quarterbacks with that. Yeah. So now it's like, you know, at that level, quarterbacks they've got a ID protection. They're trying to ID coverage. Where can I go with the ball? So now we've shown they're stemming. So now I might have to re-ID the protection. All right. Now they're showing a one high picture, but they're playing too high. They're showing a two high picture, but they're playing one high. Or now they're showing too high, but they're playing too high. You never know what you're going to yeah. get. So it can which, be can, which can lead you to hold the ball a little bit longer and then let those mm -hmm. animals up front get to you. So not exactly. a lot of great options. Yeah. Um. I think this is just another third down call. They're playing uh, what they call cover zero. So it's it's man free. There's no rat. So I'm pretty sure this safety's coming down and he's got the back. He's your middle player. And then it's just it's just man. Um, and then they're running this. He's hitting there and he's there. So it's a five man pressure. So You've kind of shown, hey, we're going to be a zone replace team. We're going to bring four and drop guys out. Um, so you have these tackles. Maybe they get a little hesitant, and now you're bringing five man pressure. And again, the quarterback, hey, I just saw one high and it was too high. I don't really know what's going on. Yeah, holding it, holding it, holding it, and you get a sack. Yeah. So it's it's just, you know. Kind of, that's I mean that's a really simple pressure, but when you you know when you're in offense and you've been seeing all these things out of oh this presentation and they're doing this you you never know what you're gonna get it just kind of keeps people on their toes. Um, yeah, one, one of Malzahn's like when they were talking when they asked him why he was go like his tempo was so high one of his phrases and I'm sure he stole it from somewhere else but was cloudy minds equal slow feet. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of the same thing on the inverse. So often, especially nowadays, the offenses are attacking with formations and motion and pace and tempo. And Georgia's kind of flipped that on its head, right? They're kind of really making the offense think and really attacking them and kind of flipping the game around a little bit. Yeah. And, and what's impressive is how much defense they can carry and – you're going to see every look at that level and, and they know how it adjusts and hey, this motion or this formation, whatever it is, you know, they're so good at diagnosing and adjusting on the fly. And you'll see that you'll see, I mean, seven, eight times a game where the offense will check and Georgia will check to something pretty crazy. And it's, it, it's like they're running something elementary, you know, yeah, they're, they're just so sharp on defense and, from like I said, their fundamentals down to they just have a great understanding of the scheme. And I think that's the way that they're coached, the way that they practice. So All right, you got any more you want us to look at? Yeah, I've got this last one. Um this guy right here, this is Nolan Smith. I think he's a first rounder. Uh -huh. Um and I'm gonna I'm gonna go from this one to another one just to kind of show you his ability. Um, so when we're talking about Florida, I'm going to say I would, I would stay away from running at him, uh -huh. <laughs> but they're going to run load options. So this is like, it's like zone read. So they're zone blocking everything. Um, and they're reading this guy and he's going to arc and they're going to pitch off of him. So you've got this going on. Yeah. And again, you're going to see people making plays in space, but he's going to squeeze, right? So you're thinking, I got a pitch. He's going to pop back out. And again, you're going to see tackles in space, right? Yeah. And, and the, I think yeah, the other thing, just over. from from my standpoint, that makes Georgia so good defensively is that there there is no like there's no hesitation, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not like – it's not – when guys have their assignment, they're freaking downhill and going to it. If that's what their assignment is, there's no kind of hesitation. 
there's not really guys in the wrong gaps. There's not guys kind of waiting and seeing. They just go and do their job, it seems like, just kind of watch from the outside. It's just there's – and that little bit of hesitation, you saw that kind of from Florida at times against LSU, just a little mm-hmm. bit of hesitation. Can, yeah. can That's where big plays could happen. But Georgia does not really – has not shown much of that this year. Yeah, you know, so, like, I, I saw a lot of people that were saying that – um so in, in that play that we just saw, right, the tight end, he's arcing that defensive end. Mm-hmm. And the tackle's blocking down. So it can kind of give him a cloudy read, right? Yeah. But whereas Georgia, he's like, that tackle's my key. I'm not going to let this guy mess with me. Yeah. Because I know, hey, I got a backer that's fitting off of that or whatever. They just do their job, and they, yeah. they have trust in the guys behind them that they're going to do their job too, whereas – you know, you see Florida. Well, he's getting arced, and he's like hesitating. And now he's getting kicked out and running yeah, counter he, underneath him. I think it was yeah. Defense been last week against LSU. Just tight end arcs. He kind of isn't quite sure. Then opens yep. himself up to get smashed by the guard that's pulling flat right at him. Yeah. So, but he, here's four again, and so they're running. Um, let me. See, I guess this is like belly. Kind of. It's like old down play. Yeah, it's just front side G kick on the center. Was the yeah, center? was that the center? Uh, yeah, it was. Okay, so maybe a pin pole in it. Yeah, you're gonna see kind of the same thing. So last time you saw him, hey, he's staying square, right? He's getting flat. Mm-hmm. He doesn't get anything at him, so he takes the air out of it. Now he can pop back out. In this case, he's gonna do the same exact thing, but now he's getting he's getting a center coming to kick him out. Yeah. I like watching this guy play because of how like violent he is when he goes and hits kickout blocks. Oh. Like I think he's yeah. listed as like 235. I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. Yeah, you slow mo this one through. What's that? Slow mo this one through. Yeah, so I guarantee you this center here probably has 60 or so pounds on yeah. him. But this is how you go and take on kickouts. Yes. You don't serve, you take the air out of it. And you go put your shoulder pad on his thigh board and you take the air out of it. So, like, effectively, right, they're not spilling. They're not boxing. They're just going and hitting it. And you're going to see they're trying to run this right here. They're trying to kick. All right, he's trying to get up here to the backer. And if you look at it from this angle, if that happens – there's nobody here that can make the play yeah. because, I mean, unless it's this safety falling in from whatever, 20, 15 yards off the ball. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get positive yardage there. But. This should look familiar to Florida Nolan fans, Smith. at least the offensive play, yeah, not so much Nolan, the defensive result here. But Yeah, Nolan Smith has other plans. Yeah, And another thing is you're going to see this shade – he, well, he's playing a two-eye. He gets a down block, so he's going to try to press it back. And they're so physical up front where the reality of it is is that he should just be able to go clear to the mic. Mm-hmm. But because he's going to press this and he gets in the down block and now he wants to fight back over the top and basically play a two-gap, like two-eye, this is kind of what you get. There's just nowhere to run it. The ball goes to the sideline. And we have a rule at, at Union County. Well, one of our rules of defense is you don't let people run the ball down the heart of your defense. Yeah. And I think anytime you can knock the ball out and get it running sideways, and especially if you're Georgia and you have guys that can tackle in space like they do, I mean, go down in there and take the air out of it and just go mash kickouts and, and let the ball fall out and let your athletes go make plays. Yeah. So. Looks a little different than what we saw in Baton Rouge a couple weeks ago. Did not quite look exactly like that, but maybe they worked on it on the bye week here. Hopefully, because they're probably going to see it. (laughs) Yeah, I would expect them to see a steady dose of of that for the rest of the year. Yeah. Until they prove they can stop it. So, (laughs) which I don't know if it'll be this week. Um, So, you want to draw some stuff up, or uh, we can kind of, I'm interested now, kind of after seeing. You know, so so just to kind of recap for everybody, they move. They've got a bunch of dudes. They present as an offensive guy. What I'm, what I always hope I get from a defense is a static picture. 
If you give me the same picture over and over and over again, if I'm worth anything, I can figure out what can work against that picture, right? Yeah. So Georgia basically gives does not give the offense what they want. Does not so the picture you, they're showing maybe ten seconds before the snap is totally different than what they're showing five seconds before the snap, which may be different than what they're showing post snap. So yeah. you got to do a lot of quick thinking, and that means your players have got to be coached to do that thinking because. Once you know you you call the play, and then once once we're getting close to the play, then now these players got to execute and recognize. So it puts a lot of stress on an offense. Just just speaking from a a guy that's coached offenses his whole career, it's just that kind of movement and just changing the picture so many different ways is just really difficult to handle. So yeah. so Florida had some success against Alabama. You said you you know they're they're somewhat similar in in structure a little bit and uh, and somewhat similar on kind of the base stuff right. What do you think those kind of successes they had? They had a lot of success with speed option, uh, a lot of success with the kind of using motion to kind of to kind of get guys in and out of the box to help with that. Is is that something that they're going to be able to use against this Georgia defense, or is it kind of you know that is you're not going to be able to learn a ton of lessons from that game, or is that something you can kind of take forward if you're Florida staff? Yeah, you know, I, I think they will. Um, you know, and I, I think the the biggest thing that Florida did against Alabama was they won on first down. Mm. And if you kind of watch it, you know, how did they win on first down? Um, I think they're going to have to be able to effectively run the quarterback. Um, you got to be able to equate numbers in the box, and you've got to be able to run the quarterback. Um, whether it's, you know, it's your read game. So it's stuff like zone read or power read or speed option, or it's just straight up quarterback run where it's, you know, you're running quarterback power and the back is the kickout guy. Um, mm -hmm. I think they've got to be able to win on first down. Um, you know, another way to do that would is, is I think using the running back in the throw game, um, and understand that you don't have to necessarily hit home runs on first down to set yourself up. But if you can get the ball out to the back on, and there, there's tons of different ways to do that. Um, I think that can help you. They've got to be unconventional though. Like they need to be looking at their tendencies and, you know, they've got to be breaking tendencies against them because doors are going to be dialed into those. Um, you know, I think, I think first down is going to be what's critical. Because if you let Georgia get into third down, they're so good on third down. Um, yeah, you know, right now on third down, they're uh, they're fifth in the country, and they get off the field sixty eight percent of the time on third down. That's really good. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're I think they're top five in in every almost every possible def defensive statistical category. Yeah, yeah, I I, I can read them off. Um, <laughs> yards per yeah. play is first. So yeah. three point five seven yards per play. The second best is three point nine three. Like that's a pretty big jump. Yeah. Um, yards per game. This is college football now in in a tempo era where people are running seventy plays a game. They give up two hundred and eight yards a game. <sighs> the second best. The second best defense in the country is Wisconsin. They give up two hundred sixty four. Yeah. Um. They're they're fifth in red zone defense. They're second in pass passing defense, uh, tenth in sacks. I mean, <laughs> it's they're they're, they're kind of really, unreal. Yeah, so, they're really good. Now, Florida. So, like we were just talking about, they had a little bit of success against Alabama. Like you, you said, they were pretty good on first downs last year. Florida had a ton of success um, going throwing wheel routes for to the backs, and they even hit a tight end off play action. Um, yeah. That seemed to be kind of their wrinkle last year is that into the boundary a lot of times with three receivers on the opposite side throwing to the single receiver side with the back out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that just presents a problem for this defense? Or is no. that kind of – was that a special thing because of were they, you know, playing – were they locking the backside in man so you got locked – the linebacker locked in man a lot is that kind of what ended up happening last year what was kind of the cause of that yeah yeah so so what they were doing was and this shows you like that mowing and them they do a really good job of scheming on offense i mean they really do 
Um, but they ran it a variety of ways. So, you know, one way was they would put Kyle Pitts as the backside number one. Yep. And then they would have three receivers away from him. So when they did that, they knew Georgia was going to double him. So they were going to double him with the corner and a safety. And they knew when they got that, they would have the 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 back on a linebacker. Um, you know, so they were basically using formation and personnel to kind of dictate that. The other thing that they were doing was they were basically putting all of their studs to the three receiver side. So they had, you know, Tony, um, Grimes, and Pitts all to the three receiver side. And they knew when they got that, that Georgia was rotating strong. So they were getting a single matchup on the X, um, the, the, the number one to the single, the single receiver side, mm-hmm. and they were going to get a backer on the back. You know, so it was a multiple ways of getting to it, but it's a different picture, you know, because at that level, once you do something once, yeah, they're going to yeah. be ready for it the second time. Um, you know, and then they would do kind of the same thing. They would have Pitts and somebody else out there, and then they would motion the other guy away. Mm-hmm. So they would go back into double and pits, but now your your pre-snap picture is different. So it's not, hey, we're just lining up in this again to run the same play. Now you're getting to the same formation to run the same play, but you're changing what it looks like pre-snap. Um, so it seems I, like I, a lot of that is kind of was personnel dictated last year. Exactly. And that's what I think this say. year it's going to be, you're not going to get that. You're going to get more. You yeah. know, kind of more of their base kind of looks. There's not really anybody they were probably thinking they need to double. No, I, I right. agree with that. Um, out of the now, so so like saying that, I think there's still some things that you can do. Um, you know, you can utilize formations to kind of dictate what you're going to get. Like you know, if if you go out and you put, you give them bunch. They only have so many bunch checks. You know, if you if you give them stack, they only have so many stack checks. If you give them, you know, formation into the boundary, they only have so many things that they'll do against formation in the boundary. I think that's one of the big things that they need to do is they need to try to simplify Georgia's defense. That um, was something using, against that was something against Alabama. You saw a lot of formation in the boundary. Yeah, that was kind of one of their yeah. wrinkles was formation in the boundary, trying to get that kind of one on one, uh, one on one matchup backside. It seemed like, mm-hmm. or give their give their single receiver a ton of space backside. Yeah, and I'll be honest, if there's anywhere that Georgia's weak, it might be a corner. So you know that that's kind of a matchup that you'll you'll look at is you know can Florida take advantage of it? Now saying that they're their week is probably overstating it because they're still pretty dang good there. But just compared to the rest of the defense, you know, that's where I would say maybe that's one way, um, one spot there where they could possibly get an advantage with a guy like Copeland. Um, you know, you just try to find a matchup on one of those guys that you like maybe and um, you try to go after it a couple times. Yeah, so here's against Alabama. So they, they did this. It seemed like this was kind of their go-to was going uh, – Florida went trips into the boundary and then mm-hmm. had was singled up up top, and, the, and then they took shots. Like here they take a shot to Copeland, I believe, off of play action. Is that yeah. is this something you think you'll see? That's a wrinkle that's yeah, got to be in the game plan? Yeah, I think you will. Um, you know, I, th- I think that's going to honestly be like more or less a lot of what they're going to have to do. Um, because I don't think they can just – I don't think they have the personnel this year like they did last year where they can kind of do that. Um, how much of, and how much of this do you think they'll see? Yeah, this so is that's something they've been thing. doing in a bunch of different ways this year is yeah. going four to a side. They'll do it sometimes with a tight end attached. Yeah. But they, they do a ton of this. Is this something you think that can kind of give Georgia some problems just because of how funky it is? Yeah, 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 and that, and that's one of the things where, so that's one of those formations that people, they only have so many things they can do against that. And what most people do is they they play bear and they go cover one. So like you can get in this and you can run speed option is a great play. Um, you can get in that and you can run the quarterback is a pretty good play. 
Um, like, who's this? This is FAU. I mean, right yeah, now, FAU has – yeah, they've got two guys up there to cover four. Yeah, they, this is that. This is one they throw out there. Uh, this is one they throw out to Wells for, like, a walk-in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, you know, doing stuff like that, you you have to use unconventional formations, I think. And that's what a lot of it, you know, to me, the game plan has to be we have to shrink their playbook or we have to be able to understand this is what they're in. And, you know, so maybe it's like you do stuff on, you know, where you might try to go fast on third down, where it's like, you know, normally you want to sub on third down when it's like third and long. Well, maybe you don't because you know George is going to sub and you might try to catch him in, you know, say say it's second and eight and you don't get any yards. George is going to sub. Yeah. So you might want to just keep your personnel on the field and and run a play. And that that seemed to be him. another another part of their, their kind of strategy against Alabama. They were in 11 the entire game. They did not change personnel mm-hmm. groups for a single play in that game. And they've – They've changed. They haven't changed a ton. Eleven's like their base, but that game, nothing else. Stayed in eleven, yeah. and I thought that was the kind of, like you said, they were good on first downs. Stay in eleven. Don't let Alabama sub, and then try to do these long drives and kind of wear them down a little bit eventually. Yeah, and you know you can do other things on third down where maybe you do sub, and you know it could be something like, hey, we're gonna align and empty. Because you're you're not gonna get a bunch of exotic looks into empty. It's like defenses almost have to show their hand in empty. So let's align in empty, and then let's bring the back back in. You know, doing something like that. So maybe hey, we can get them to tip their hand early. Um, you know, we'll we'll know hey, is it man? Is it zone? Um, you know, and then go from there. So any any way that you can help your quarterback understand hey, this is what we think is going on right here. Yeah, that's gonna be my next question to you. Going empty, um, going empty, and then going with that four to a side look. Mm-hmm. So if you go four to a side, and then maybe motion the back out, and now you're an empty. Would yeah. that is that something that would give? I mean, it kind of would give. It seemed like it would give anybody some problems initially, but that's yeah. got to be something where you don't really have a lot for that. Yeah, well, so so most people, if you give them four by zero, they're gonna play corners over. Yeah. So, you know, you could go four by zero and then motion the back out and maybe you get them on linebacker. And that's a, that could be a decent matchup, you know, so yeah. doing, doing stuff like that. Um, you know, I, it's tough because George is so good, but, you know, they'll they'll find they'll find ways to yeah. to dictate certain things. And um, I think that's going to be what it comes down to for their offense. You know, like I don't think they're going to be able to run like zone scheme and stuff right <laughs> after they're so big and strong up front, yeah. and they're not going to be able to run gap scheme at four. We've already seen that because he's going to go in and, and, and decapitate pullers. <laughs> and, um, and we were talking about this kind of off before we jumped on. Florida had a lot of problems with Kentucky moving up front, just like after yeah. this post snap movement. Mm-hmm. George is not just going to sit there and pull. they're they're going to move so. No. This is going to be a uh, you know you're going to see how much the four offensive line has improved since that Kentucky game because that killed a ton of their run plays, just yeah. post snap or post snap movement, guys getting across face easy and then blowing up the run play in the backfield. Yeah, um, this is another one that they've I've, Florida's only run this I think once this year. Okay, like you said, you got a bunch you know bunch can present some problems, but this they've only run this one time. Like true yeah, exactly. triple, like triple, yeah, yeah. Is do you think that's something that? And again, we're kind of speculating. Was that something that it would probably be worthwhile to break that kind of stuff out with who you got at quarterback and how they play defensively? Just trying to give them different looks that maybe they haven't gone over yet, or maybe they haven't spent a ton of time on the triple option. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, one hundred percent. Like I said, I think. You've you've got to be able to change the picture. You've got to be able to kind of break some tendencies in this game. You know, um, if you if you just give Georgia the, their normal formations that they always see, and you're not you know you're not using a lot of motion, you're not using 
you know, stacks and bunches and stuff like that to try to maybe gain leverage in the run game, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I think four can do, and, and two, we talk about how good George is on third down is, you know, you, you've got an athletic quarterback back there, whether it's Emory or whether it's Richardson, you know, move the pocket on third down. You know, let's let's move the pocket, try to get away from some of their, their interior pressure, and then just tell them, hey, man, it, it, it's a throw-run option. Yeah. And you can do some of that even on your early downs. Like, do that on first down. And, hey, if the throw's not there, just get four with your legs. And now we're in second and six, and we can live with that. But I don't – like, we're just running right at them on first down, I don't think that's the answer. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so either. Um, they were able to have success against Alabama, but I, I think this Georgia defense, you've seen Alabama kind of struggle at some other times this year post that Florida game. This Georgia defense is just on a different level than really even the second place team. It's not even close. You mentioned some of those stats. Yeah. It's they're on a whole different planet so far mm-hmm. this year. Now yeah. I think some of that is going to be they haven't really played. Florida, this is going to be the best offense they've played all year, Florida's I offense. Agree. I agree. But they are so good and, like you said, so fundamentally sound, and there's no hesitation. These guys know exactly what they're supposed to be doing on every play. Yeah. It, it is not – you know, even even with Florida being the best they're, they've played so far this year, you've got to think they're going to be up to the task. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It, it's, it's, it's a tough when you're just looking at it. I mean, there, there's nothing easy there about it. Yeah. So, in in your opinion, the the kind of the Florida's best chances are kind of presenting some different pictures, some different looks formationally, mm-hmm. and, and kind of using that formationally, and and then maybe some um, there's a few different wrinkles out of that to try to get them not don't present a static picture to Georgia because if you do that. They're going to eat you alive. But if you can show them a lot of different looks pre-snap, make them think a little bit, kind of turn the tables on them, that's got to be Florida's best chance to win. Yep. And I think, you know, the big thing is is if you can find, you know, two or three type of plays where you can get chunks just off of that, you know, where it's something new that they haven't seen, like, I don't know, it might be a double pass. It might be something gimmicky. Yeah. You need to find – because you you, you got to have chunk plays to win this game, yeah. Because you're not going to just be able to to they're not going to have 15 play drives on Georgia. You've got to have yeah. chunk plays. They're just not going to happen because eventually you're going to get behind the sticks, you know. And, and there's only so many things that you can do to stay ahead. So you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some some gimmicky plays, you know, some yeah. some weird shot plays, you know, stuff like that. Um, or you might see him get into like bigger personnel and and try to hide a tight end somewhere going, you know, just things like that. You know, yeah. you've seen them a lot where they'll run the they'll get in bigger personnel and they'll throw like the now screen. And then here comes the tight end on, on the fade and it's a double pass, you know, things like that. Yeah, um, I think you'll, you'll probably see some of them. Yeah, I, I know uh, a few years – I think Mullen's first game in the Florida Georgia's Florida's head coach, they dialed up a trick play early and had it open, but uh, I believe mm-hmm. Felipe, Felipe Franks missed the throw. So I, yeah, I definitely I, I definitely agree. You're going to see – you this you get feel like you got to see some of that, and that's when Georgia was playing really well on defense. Um, mm-hmm. Had a really good team. So you know, similar circumstances I, I be- here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you see like some quarterback run fake where it's like it might look like quarterback power and now the quarterback stepping back to throw to a tight end. Or, you know, you might see some stuff that looks like like power read, and but it's really play action and you're hitting the arc player up the seam. Um, yeah. You know, like they ran that play, I think. It, was it against LSU. Kentucky or was it LSU? It was the power read with the back running up yeah. the seam. And they ran that, yeah, that twice was- and scored on it twice. Or that was uh, Vandy, yeah, Vandy. They had him That's running right. down like the middle of the field, yeah. and then they ran. They ran something somewhat. They ran kind of a similar look where they faked in the bag, then had him run up the hash yeah. against LSU. Yeah. Um, that was a pretty well designed play. Just looking forward for Georgia teams like Tennessee. You know what? Would a team like that with a hypo, super wide spread, super up tempo, everything's like, um, you know, super wide receiver splits. 
you know, is that stuff that could give them some problems going forward or, or is it really just a team that is it's more personnel driven? It's, it's kind of going to, what is going to give them issues. Yeah. You know, and, and you see, so like he uses a lot of the old like Baylor stuff where they yeah. got receivers outside the numbers. Yeah, and again, on that's, the sideline. yeah. You know, that that's one of those things where, you know, people only have, so many ways to play that you might have two ways to play that so yeah. again you're dictating what you're going to get and now it's just you you've got to be able to exploit what they're in so you know I, I could see you know some of that with with tennessee being able to to get i mean they got florida on some stuff with that yeah um there was the one time wasn't it wasn't it just like they ran a little the little now key screen out there and then yeah the just guy went up. yeah i mean you know, all all it takes is something, some kind of easy miscommunication. You know, and now Georgia doesn't have a whole lot of those. But no, you know, yeah. So uh, my last question for you, since you've been watching football, some people are saying this is the greatest defense of all time, statistically, or at least the best since 2011 Alabama, I believe. Where did where does this defense rank as of right now for you? Is this one of the best you've ever seen? In terms of scheme, talent, and fit, yeah, I mean so, so the the thing about the eleven Bama team was they weren't seeing what Georgia's seeing now. No, like in eleven, you were still seeing I and you know the RPO game wasn't big. I'm RPO changed how you play defense like yeah. forever because it used to play. It used to be you know you could play nine man space and quarters, and everyone was in the run fit. And now you can't do that. So now it's, you know, you got to kick your linebackers to the back and you got to get your fit away from the back and whoever's to the back's out of fit. And now people are running flop read RPOs where they're reading away from it. It's a nightmare. I mean, it really is. And, and what they're doing now in, in today's game. So I'll put it like this. The best defensive game that I was ever part of was the 15 Ole Miss Florida game. I mean, so Ole Miss came in there. They were scoring like 45 points a game, and they scored, I think it was 10 that night. No. But Georgia does that like every weekend, every. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So They haven't given up more than 13 this year, I don't think. Yeah. You know, honestly, they remind me a lot of that defense. They're really, really good up front. You know, that defensive line was – you have guys like Dante Fowler and John Bullard, and, I mean, they're really stout and – Really good DBs, really good linebackers. Jared Davis, Alex Anzalone, um, kind of reminds me a lot of that defense. Just, just really fast guys everywhere, and a dominant yeah. defensive line. Um, yeah. That's a good line. combination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, uh, last thing to put you on the spot. No, so the last question: Will Florida score the most points this season against Georgia? Will the Florida break thirteen? I think they'll score more than 13, yeah. yeah. That's that's the most Georgia's given up? I think it's 13 twice. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> they're well, you good. know, and I saw something today, and it, it said, um, you know, every time the, the Braves have been in the World Series, uh, Florida has beaten Georgia. So if those two are tied together, um, they'll probably score more than 13 because I don't see them winning like a 13-10 ball game. <laughs> no, I don't, but, I don't. I don't see that either. So, I would I would say that they'll score more than thirteen. I don't know if it'll be much more, but <laughs> more, but more. So there yeah. you go. So if you're I mean, looking for so more two team total bets, yeah. So two touchdowns. If they make the extra points, they're in. Right. That's been a problem in some games this year. <laughs> yeah, the kicking point. has been an issue. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, two. All I need is two touchdowns and the extra points, which are not guarantees these days. But yeah. Riley, thanks for coming on here and, and explaining this Georgia defense and what makes them so special. Um, we'll be back next week, kind of reviewing this Florida Georgia game. We'll get to see this defense. Uh, live and in living color this weekend. So um, the, it should be an interesting game. Florida Georgia is always a great game. Riley, thanks again for jumping on here and talking with us. I appreciate it, man. It's always a lot of fun. No problem. Riley, where can people find you on Twitter and things like that? Uh, I think it's Riley Reed UF. I think. Let me double check. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, at Riley Reed UF. So Riley is a good follow, he, especially during Florida games. 
Um, really enjoy, enjoy him uh, getting been out of shape with Florida defending counter against LSU. You could have seen that live during the game. Yeah, uh, some issues they were having, and then um, you know if you're in the area, check out Union County football. One yeah. of the state's power or traditional powers. You guys are having a good year. Yep. Um, where are you guys at right now? I know you guys are heading towards the playoffs, right? Yeah, so right now we're 8 0. Um, we've been playing really good both sides of the ball. Um, we play Newberry this week, who's kind of a big rivalry game for us. They're a really good football team. Um, I think they're six and two right now. Um, and they're in they're in one A with us, you know, so that's always a, a big game. And we lost that one last year. Um, that was the second game we played. Um, you know, so we're gonna go try to get that one back this week. There you go. So hey, if you're in the area, go watch Union County. Really, really well coached team on both sides of the ball. Riley, appreciate you coming on. We'll have you on again later this year, I'm sure. Awesome. Looking All forward right. to it. Thanks, man.